like a memory of when each of your children were born and or a little memory from each one of them, like specific things about either events of our birth or whatever. All right. I remember when Becky was born. She was actually due in June. She was due around the 15th of June. This is my first pregnancy. I was very fortunate. In my pregnancies, I did not have uh, any unpleasant symptoms of pregnancy, as, as many women do who suffer from. I didn't have morning sickness. What happened to me the first three months, my first trimester, I was very sleepy. I mean, I got so sleepy I could be sitting and talking to you and all of a sudden doze off. And she got that now. <laughs> oh, strange. As a matter of fact, I even remember one night when your father, this is before we got married, he took me out. We were having dinner in this in this restaurant, and I was very tired. I'd been, I, I don't remember why I was so tired that day, but anyway, there was a fan up above us that had a hum in it. I will never, this restaurant was somewhere on East 9th Street. And this fan was humming above, and your father was talking to me about something. Well, the combination there was killer. <laughs> the combination of the two things. I actually dozed off. God, I will never forget that. Um, oh, I'll tell you another thing. But I'll be, before I get on your kids, I, you I must, must tell you about this. When I came here, at, at 105th and Carnegie, there was a restaurant called the Southern Tavern. And it was a wonderful restaurant, and they had a dance floor, and it was uh, very popular with, with the, uh, you know, the older teen crowd. I would say anywhere from 19 to 22. And I remember they used to serve chicken poulet with fries. It was great. It was a wonderful place, but the fact that the word tavern was attached to it was something I could never discuss with my parents because they would hear the word tavern, and of course they would, oh, no, 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 no. So I would say, we went to the Southern. <laughs> and then one day my mother and I were riding the bus down Carnegie, and I said, oh, Mom, there's the Southern Tavern, that wonderful restaurant. Uh -oh. The Tavern? The Southern Tavern? What's the Southern Tavern? Well, I finally had to, to, to get off uh, on our way home and take my mother in there and show her that it was a perfectly respectable place. It was not a bar. And uh, the, the, I came from a very conservative background. Now, how did we get from your pregnancy to this? Well, just doing whatever. I was just was reminded of it. No, I was just curious. Funny, funny <laughs> I idea. missed it. Anyway. Okay, Beth, uh, let's see. Your father and I had been married. We were married in 49. And uh, then your father was still in law school at the time. And, of course, that would have been very bad if we had children before he finished law school because we had no money. And... Um, that would not have been good planning. Well, finally, uh, I got pregnant after, uh, and in 1953, we had Beth. But Dad she was, was out of law school then, I take it? Yeah, oh yes. Your father was not only out of law school, but he uh, he had been working for the Sindel brothers, Sindel and Sindel, because at that time, when your father graduated, although he was one of the top three in his law school class, the major law firms in the city of Cleveland did not hire Jews. So uh, he, well, and one or two Jewish law firms uh, simply did not hire him. They had, they took on family members, uh, uh, people with business connections. And uh, your father went to work for Sindel and Sindel, which was primarily a personal injury firm. He really was not happy in that kind of practice. and decided to open, go into business for himself. Now at that time, Dr. Marcus, Al Marcus, uh, who was the brother-in-law of <laughs> Al Poto, who okay. was Marvin's mother's second husband. Marvin's stepfather. Marvin's stepfather, although, yeah. He was never called that. Marvin's stepfather. Anyway, Al Marcus uh, helped. They loaned us a thousand dollars, and my parents loaned us a thousand dollars. And I decorated your father's first office, which was in the Leader Building. And I remember going to S. Rose Inc. and picking out furniture that had actually the 
furniture from the old Bell Telephone Company. And it was dark green leather, and I remember furnishing that office very... Where was the Leader no, Building? The Leader Building is still, it's still in existence. Oh. It's still one of the nicest office buildings in the city. Downtown. It's a small, yeah, yeah it's on East 6th. And Superior, right? And, uh, and uh, East 6th and Superior. Well, it's not facing Superior. It faces East 6th. But it's still an elegant office building. And I, I remember buying the drapes and fixing up the office and putting a wall to separate the receptionist from the lawyer's uh, office. And I worked as his secretary. Wow. Um, Were you pregnant at the yep. time? Oh. <laughs> yep. And it was, I remember the desk. As a matter of fact, I think we may still have that original desk. I'm not Who sure. has it? Ben, do you have that old uh, wooden desk? Remember that desk that was up in Grandpa's house? Up in Grandpa's house. Grandpa's house. Joe's? Yeah, I think that was the original or the desk. Double the desk. Not A's desk. No, wait a minute. Are you talking about? I'm talking about the desk at, at, in, in Eddie's room. Right. <coughs> I'm not talking about that's the maple the desk, desk that, that that's in Susie's house. Not Eddie's desk. Not Susie Eddie's has. desk. I'm talking about the first. It was a huge. We all used. Wait, it had metal pullouts. You mean round? Well, I maybe. Maybe. I don't recall. It doesn't make any difference. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> And then I, I was pregnant, and I remember, um, I think even my mother and Irene went down. About the last month of my pregnancy, they spelled me off from going to the office every day. And then I remember the day, well, I mean, I, I used to go to the office every day. So and then they started, sure. I think I started going in half days, and they used to come in to answer the phone. And that, that was fun. I enjoyed that. I even went out on some interviews with, with your father, and um, we didn't have, as we said, it was chicken one day and feathers the next. It was, uh, it was uh, an, an interesting, uh, an interesting time. Very tight. And very tight, very tight. But we lived uh, at that, when we first got married, we lived at East 82nd in what, in between Chester and Huff, because Jeez. at that time, <laughs> Chester was created. When we first moved there, there was no Chester well, Avenue. No. Just, didn't you take your tack and Ida to your first apartment? I think I took everybody to see the yeah, first apartment. Yeah, 82nd between... 82nd between Chester and Huff. Wow. And it was a nice apartment. And I remember my brother Eddie was so yeah. funny because we talked <laughs> about the fact <laughs> that our, that our uh, apartment faced north, so it faced the lake, so any case... Oh, for a lake. And he came over to the apartment expecting to see the lake. <laughs> Where's the lake? And he always teased us about that. Where's the lake? He kept looking out the window. I can't see the lake. I can't quite see the lake. But uh, it was a nice apartment. Me of several what? Stories. I said, this is just yeah. reminding me of several stories I want to hear. One is the lamb chop. Two is oh, the God. Oh, crystal. Yes. And three is Uncle Eddie laying naked in the hallway. <laughs> oh, well, that was in Chicago. Oh, I know, no. but I just thought okay. of three stories I want to hear, so we have to remember those. Go ahead. He's just making a menu. Well, anyway, this was... Uh, uh, a nice apartment, 